it uh, right when uh, App Store SDK for iPhone was out and we were the first in India to release an app. Uh, quite a big success. We are still in a garage and uh, we made more than a million dollar in revenue from this app. Uh, then this uh, Daily Deeds app, which is uh, unlike all the other uh, to-do list trackers, this app uh, tracks you the habits. And uh, this is among the most popular apps in Japan of all the countries. Then we released a game by name Robokill. Apple has featured this game, Robokill, and uh, another game that we did, Apocalypse Max, as the best action game done by on the App Store, uh, in the entire App Store uh, history. So there is a section on the App Store in the action games category where both the games are featured. And uh, we recently, two months back, released uh, this app, Twine, uh, which, has, uh, uh, which is doing quite well. It's covered all over the media, including Fox News, New York Times. Uh, last week they covered it, and uh, phenomenal growth base, huge retention. So based on these apps that we released for our own self, uh, that we released to the market, I'm going to talk about uh, the tips and tricks that we apply to uh, the apps that we develop ourselves. So I first start with the brainstorming phase. So in the brainstorming, uh, what is uh, uh, very important for any app developer or uh, uh, maybe first question I like to ask everyone is that how many of you are developing your own apps? Uh, if you can raise your hands. All right. So uh, there is always like uh, whenever we think of uh, developing an app, we think of a problem to solve. And uh, sometimes, uh, like we are trying to make some things better, which is available in the market. Uh, but uh, whenever you decide that, okay, you want to take the next step and uh, you want to make an application, start, already start thinking that how you will be describing it to a potential investor or how you'll be describing when you'll be releasing it to the market. Uh, because journalists don't have a big attention span. You would have to describe it in one line description and uh, whether you can do it for the idea that uh, you are trying to do. If all you have to say is like this is a better app, this does better, or this is a high quality app, this is a better user interface driven app, I think that won't sell much and the initial media direction is very important. Uh, so you need to think about that one line description. For example, the Twine dating app that we did, we thought of uh, some key lines that uh, while we were uh, building up the idea, is the first intellectual dating app, or it is flirt first, reveal later, or is it never miss an interesting stranger? So these were the taglines that uh, we came up with while we were ideating whether we should go up, uh, go and uh, develop this idea or not. And uh, the, also it helps in uh, you know articulating your thoughts in uh, one line in a very short span so that you don't beat around the bush, uh, you know, saying that uh, all the cliche things that you can use. You can also create visual, you know, uh, palpable excitement around you, which is the second very important aspect in our brainstorming. That as a founder or as someone who is uh, developing an app, we are always, uh, the idea is just like our baby. And even though the idea maybe or the baby might be super ugly, but uh, since it's our own baby, we really love the baby. But it's very important that other people around you, you are able to excite them with your idea. And... Uh, the only way to figure out that they are excited because whenever you are sharing your idea, you will be sharing only with your friends and family and they are always going to encourage you, it's a good idea, keep moving forward. So what is the key factor, like how you would know that they are really excited about your idea when you disclose it to them? The only way to figure that out is if they start contributing to your idea. If they start telling that, okay, you can do this in this, you can do in that in that, or you can build on this, or you can do this design thing. If they are not contributing to your idea and all they are saying is a very good idea, trust me, the, uh, the idea is not super good because it's, it's not touching their brain. It's just uh, going through one year and uh, leaving the other year. So that excitement is super important before even you start building uh, uh, next steps uh, in the brainstorming phase. Uh, what's the impact uh, like? Like in, a, in mobile, it's quite important that uh, you do those ideas like uh, nowadays the billion dollar is the next million dollar so unless until uh, the the idea has a big vision is going to touch multiple points and uh, it's better to focus on the masses especially on the consumer side of things i'm more talking this presentation uh, just to uh, recollect is more for the consumer point of view rather than the enterprise 
so it's better to focus on the big masses rather than a particular geography or a niche uh, so that uh, if your idea somehow clicks off then uh, you know one in uh, as someone described in the previous presentation there are more than million apps and uh, very few of them are super successful so if you finally hit the lottery you go really big so it's uh, if it is at all a lottery then uh, rather play a billion dollar lottery than make a million dollar bet so it is uh, the odds would be better if you go at a bigger impact name is quite important uh, <coughs> Uh, though I must say that at the time of unlike when you name a website where you think about the uh, search engine optimization, you try to put your keywords in your domain. It's not that important in an app name. I'll come to the uh, app store optimization later. Uh, you can do a few other things. And also quite uh, another thing that is important is that there may be a website which already might be there for the name of the app that you're creating. You can still use that name as long as your company name you can attach with it. Uh, for example, Apple has a, a you know works application, numbers application, pages application. Those numbers and pages on their own are not trademarkable. But when you combine Apple with numbers, then that becomes one application. In the App Store, it will be only called as numbers or pages. So it's you know you can really be creative. Uh, you don't unlike a domain name where. You have to go, you search for a domain name, you are not able to find the correct domain name and then you have to go find a different uh, name. In the App Store, you can uh, find a name which really represents the app that you are doing and uh, stick with that name. You can always uh, make a, for example, we did a, a, a dating app, we called it Twine. Uh, so it's T-W-I-N-E and it's a single, uh, we were able to get a domain name Twine.me instead of .com. And on the App Store also, uh, I'll come to that, it's not important that you just call itself as a twine on the App Store and it, sh it shouldn't be called like that uh, when I come to the App Store optimization. And when you have a shorter name, uh, uh, I think it also helps uh, in uh, communicating and again describing your idea. Uh, so name is very important. Is uh, There is a reason whenever uh, you have children in your home, the first thing that you do right after the birth is to name them. Because if you don't name your idea right at the ideation stage, the attachment uh, is a bit difficult to cultivate. So it's from my point of view, naming an idea uh, in the initial stages is very important. And the, if the name is catchy enough, the idea will start looking even better. Uh, coming to the team, like once you start building on an idea and you have enough people excited around you, you have a, uh, a one-line description which gets people excited. Uh, Another way to find out if, uh, you know, they are getting excited is to attract the right kind of team. Uh, you know, quite a, I've seen, uh, including myself, like I made uh, sometimes mistakes where I thought that let me get the most talented guy or the most experienced guy in uh, design or in the engineering and they'll help me build a great app. But uh, the reality is uh, really uh, uh, not like this. Uh, Usually the people who does the best for you or who forms the best team are the ones who are actually excited about your app. Uh, uh, you know, in this field where uh, SDKs are changed every six months and uh, new uh, new mobile apps or new mobile phones are coming every six months, I don't think the so experience, I think uh, in this industry, experience is overrated. So go for people, even though they are fresh out of college, if they are super passionate and they are really excited about your idea or what you are trying to do, I think they will do great for your app rather than finding people who are like 10 or 20 years in the industry. I am not saying you don't have them, but if they are not excited, you are paying top salary for those people thinking that they will do everything for you. That's unlikely going to happen. So focus on people who are genuinely excited about your idea and uh, there are many ways that you can uh, feel that and uh, perceive that. And uh, using those metrics, uh, you have them on the team. So the next is the uh, user experience and uh, uh, the specifications. So. Whenever we talk about design, again, uh, you know, most of the times uh, we start hitting a roadblock, uh, you know, we start telling ourselves things like that, we are not creative enough or uh, we require a great designer to pull off great pixels. But most people, uh, what they don't understand is design would be as good as 
uh, the uh, the user experience that you want to create. And by user experience, I mean the the focus on what that app is trying to do. Uh, sometimes, if an app uh, is not working out, most people start uh, you know blaming uh, the design that the design is not as good, and that is why the app is not working. Design from all point of view remain uh, super important and uh, more important than design or the visual pixels that you see is the user interaction. And that user interaction is built on what you want your user to do within the app. So if uh, you have decided that a user has to do 10 things in the app or user has to do one thing in the app, that is super important and how then uh, once you have decided that this is one action which is a wow moment in your app. Like you always have to figure out uh, uh, what is that uh, first minute or the magic moment in your app. Like once he comes to that moment, then there is a wow that is coming out of his mouth. If uh, by default you think that uh, there is no such moment in your app, it's very difficult then to uh, you know get attraction in the mobile app ecosystem. Each mobile developer works his salt. All everything that he tries to do is that within the first minute a user gets to that step when he says, wow, I really want to have this app. And that is how the entire user interaction or design works is like how quickly I can take him to that wow moment. If you haven't really, uh, you know, you, uh, that's where the testing and all comes when you will be showing your mobile app to the other users. If all you end up doing is explaining how the first screen works, how the second screen works, how the third screen works, uh, it's better to go back to the table drawing board and rethink your idea. Because mobile app is not about, uh, you know, teaching the users how to use the app. That there is a reason why no help manuals come with the mobile app. Mobile app are supposed to be you tap the mobile, uh, uh, the app and uh, you get to the, the functionality that you are trying to achieve with that within no time. And that should happen in the first minute itself. The deletion rate on the mobile apps, uh, if the user is not getting to use your app or not getting to the functionality that you want the, user to use within the first three minutes, 80% plus of users will delete your app within the first try. They won't even give it a second chance. So the more friction that you will create, and by friction I mean you may want him to create, uh, you know, uh, uh, put a set of questions that he needs to answer, or you move, put a registration screen where you will ask him 10 questions that, okay, go through the uh, five questions or 10 questions and give me all your info. Uh, or you may put a big video or uh, some kind of advertisement or uh, something before even gets to see your app. So these are all fiction things. Some of the things might be important for your app. You would need to do it. But again, there are solutions for that. For example, uh, uh, like if you want to take a registration, it is better to integrate it with Google Plus or Facebook or uh, some other medium where all he needs to do is a single tap and you will have his email ID, you will have his all... Uh, geographical info and all the gender and uh, likes and mutual interest and uh, you can uh, that you would never be able to gather by uh, by creating a registration for him and uh, sometimes uh, fiction is a necessary evil uh, just like in banking we have a term uh, know your customer I think in mobile also especially if your app is free knowing your customer is super important if uh, you don't know your uh, actual user uh, which uh, geography he is from uh, or uh, which age group he is from and uh, what is the kind of interest that he has or why is he using the app. If you don't have those parameters, then later on the challenge will become uh, even uh, tougher because you don't know where to spend money to acquire what kind of users because you don't know the users that are actively using your app. And uh, from my uh, you know experience, Facebook, uh, though I understand there is a friction, not many, uh, if you put up a Facebook login in the front of the app, quite a few people might not uh, tap it, thinking that uh, it is invading their privacy. Uh, but from my point of view, the, in the Twine experience, out of every 100 users that downloaded the app, 80 users tapped the Facebook login and about 20% didn't tap it. So that is the cost of knowing all the data that uh, you would like to know about your users and the 20% is the price that you would have to pay for it. Uh, I would have, uh, I made the choice obviously go with the 80% and uh, ignore the 20% users because the data that you get, you will be able to serve your users better. Uh, it's very important to follow design guidelines on the respective platform. If uh, you are using Android or you are using the iOS 
on the android google has provided their own design guidelines and on ios they have provided the new ios 7 guidelines if you try uh, you know creating too much of custom content which are not following the guidelines or if on android uh, you are using facebook login and not using google plus login and vice uh, on uh, ios doesn't have a social ne network affinity just now but uh, we face this situation uh, where we didn't put a google plus login on google uh, App Store and it was very difficult uh, or it became impossible for the Google app review team to review our app uh, to get a potential feature. So we learned the hard way that uh, you need to cater, though it won't be told in obvious terms, but uh, if you're releasing on Android and you believe that uh, uh, you need to create a login, then uh, it is better to use Google+. Plus. They are not saying that don't use Facebook, but they say that all users would uh, appreciate if you Google, uh, give Google+. Plus. Also what I go to learn from the Google app review teams is that they are quite focused on giving uh, you know the, the functionality which differentiate uh, their apps from the iOS apps like uh, uh, actions within the notifications and uh, things like that. If you include those uh, uh, things within your app then there is a likely chance that uh, they will feature your app. Uh, other thing also like if you are building a tablet app, uh, uh, phone app is uh, if there is a scope, build an app along with that for the tablet as well. That again helps you get a feature because uh, most of the apps, uh, app stores are quite saturated with the phone apps. Uh, though obviously new innovation will continue to happen, but they are not so saturated with the tablet apps. So if you do a tablet app which has a user interface which is not the 2x of the iPhone, but is made up for tablet, uh, again your chances to get featured on the app store will go exponentially high. And uh, I don't know if you are uh, aware or not, a uh, feature on the App Store would give you an immediate bump which should likely get you in top 100 or top 200 on the App Store and that is kind of make or break for your app which is, uh, uh, which is a good event to happen. So uh, again moving on, uh, you know continuing with the user experience and specifications, uh, just taking a step back. Uh, again, I'm re-emphasizing that uh, thinking in pixels is not what uh, user experience is about. Uh, user experience is closely uh, integrated with the specification stage uh, where you're looking at uh, what is that uh, you want your users to do uh, within the app. Once you have finalized that this is one action that I want my user to do, then you build on the, you know, the entire app user experience around it and in the late stage is only the visual design comment you would want to see that how he flips to the first screen or how he gets to the first section that remains the most important and uh, gamification has kind of taken a center stage in almost every app or game that we see it's no longer limited only to the games including the apps there is a lot of gamification that is built in and now to you know uh, <coughs> talk a bit about the gamification uh, you know the world uh, the basically the gamification is uh, whenever a user is using the app, you need to reward him back, which is not, uh, which shouldn't be in a real reward or it shouldn't be a, actually a money reward where you end up spending more money. But you need to reward the user uh, once he is addicted with your app at how he stands vis-a-vis -vis rest of the users. Because once the user is addicted to your app, he wants to, or he kind of becomes a fan of your app. And as you know, most of the fan following, they want to prove to the world that I am the biggest fan. So unless until you give a medium to the user to prove that that uh, he is your biggest fan or he stands where in the leaderboard, once there are addiction elements available in the in your application, uh, that kind of hooks him to be uh, more of a fan that uh, ideally he is if he doesn't have a medium to prove that uh, uh, you know he is expert at your app or he really knows how to play this game. So gamification is tied into this and. Most of the people do it by giving them virtual rewards, by giving them leaderboards. Uh, virtual rewards they are usually able to share on the Facebook and Twitter, again to tell their followers like we also in Temple Run, when most of our Facebook feeds was uh, filled up with uh, how they are scoring on the Temple Run. The thing was like uh, as a fan you really uh, like to have uh, to become famous just because you are using that game and uh, having a high score. And uh, if you start thinking in the user experience stage that how to build those, tie those, uh, you know, additional rewards with the addiction element that you think that your app has. And, you know, uh, again taking a step back, no matter what problem you are solving, eventually you want your users to open up your app every day two or three times. 
if you are again solving a problem which is like a calculator app or uh, some app which is only going to open once in a week or uh, twice in a week likely chance of uh, mass adoption of that app is uh, is very unlikely so you have to think of uh, you whenever you are brainstorming an idea you have to think of a scenario that your app is going to be opened at least two or three times a day and once it is open then the user is going to use your app minimum for one minute if not more and once these uh, criteria are met then obviously there is addiction element that has to follow if your user is opening the app so frequently and that addiction element has to be rewarded in terms of virtual rewards or leadership boards or stuff like that and uh, i don't think so it will ever go out of fashion uh, you know uh, playing games we have been playing games since the uh, nintendo days uh, playing mario even before the atari days and almost every game has a top 3 scorecard who is the number 1 number 2 number 3 so it's been uh, there for last 30 40 years since the time uh, you know we have been using the computers or the digital goods and uh, this is uh, just now getting more organized uh, where uh, your users would love uh, for uh, you know putting in this functionality within the application uh, most of us would like our application to 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 grow organically but uh, again this is far from truth uh, you know with more than million apps if you believe that uh, you have the idea which will just uh, grow by word of mouth you have to be extremely lucky uh, obviously one of those scenarios once uh, here in a here and there they will come out but uh, you have to you know uh, uh, usually hack such uh, things where uh, you have to uh, once you release the app you have to always focus on the user acquisition and uh, that becomes part of the user experience now if uh, your app is uh, let's say uh, allowing you to check uh, is a banking application is allowing you to check your account how much money you have and on the next screen you put in a invite hook that invite your uh, facebook friend or a twitter friend to come use the banking application this is not how it is going to work you can't just put the you know facebook handles or twitter handles anywhere that you feel like okay people will start uh, inviting there has to be again a strong motivation for the user why they why they should invite like all the users are very smart they are almost or they are equally as smart as uh, you the one who is creating the idea so if you believe that uh, just because you have created a screen which is pretty looking and where there is a facebook invite or a twitter invite they are not going to do that it has to tie in the functionality of the app and there has to be again uh, the reward if he is giving you that info or uh, that kind of ties into like uh, you know i just uh, uh, for example say a banking award maybe uh, i'm just making it up let's say he is gets uh, on a on a fixed uh, deposit he gets uh, 5% interest uh, annually if you uh, invite 100 friends to use that banking application and he starts getting 6% interest that's where i would be strongly motivated to get those people and the math should work out for the people who are giving the interest that's why putting the screen is not going to work it has to be incentivized and the incentive has to be real not in terms of uh, real like it has to be attached to money or real gifts but uh, for the reason that the user is using your app if he is using for banking then it has to tie up with the banking rewards if he is using for game then it has to tie up with the gaming rewards and so is any other application that he would uh, end up using same i uh, invite and social hooks are the same social hooks is like the facebook or the your contact book or uh, the twitter from my experience uh eventually once you figure out that there is a incentive for the user to invite for example in the twine uh, dating app what we did was uh we allowed uh, all the female users to come within the app uh without any restriction but the male users would have to wait until the enough female users are there so in bangalore uh, uh let's say there are 100 uh, female users that join the app then the 100 male guys who have come first come first serve entry they'll come in but the rest of them have to wait in the queue now if they have to come in then they would have to invite a friend of the opposite gender to come in now the invite rate is super high there is a clear incentive that they have to come and use the dating app and otherwise they'll stay outside so this completely ties up with the functionality of what we are trying to do and then we get the users to come and use the app and there is a slight solution of the user acquisition problem that every app fa uh, faces by not letting them in only this is also you would have seen in the clubs uh especially the night clubs or the dancing clubs where uh, if you don't go as a couple they won't let you in but if you go as a single uh, they if you go as a couple they'll let you in but if you go as a single they'll ask you money or something else to get you in 
So we see this gamification in real life, but we don't apply those gamification or the user acquisition techniques in the application that we are using. All we need to do is see the real life around ourselves and uh, you know apply those things. Uh, coming back to the social works, from my point of view, what works the best once you click uh, send an invite, uh, in our experience, a short text message which you send to your contacts works the, the best among all the user acquisition means uh, which you do with the invitation. The next is the uh, email, third is the uh, Facebook and fourth is the uh, Twitter among all the four uh, main medium that you use for inviting users to your app to, to asking your users to get the his friends and family to the app and obviously contacts remain the biggest target. Uh, 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 one thing I would say is that uh, don't uh, uh, ever make the assumptions the assumption that your user would be stupid because if you try to not take the right permission or try to hack into the context, I believe like Path did it sometime back uh, the app and they got uh, caught. Uh, that creates a lot of negative publicity though we all say that all publicity is good but that kind of negative publicity might destroy you. So it is better to disclose uh, if you are accessing the context and don't do it in a hacky way so that uh, people know that uh, you are sending a message to the friends and family that are on their contact book. And again, if there is an incentive, they'll do it themselves. Uh, you, you you really shouldn't do these kind of things in the face that uh, you put an interstitial that now you should invite, then only, uh, you know, I kind of do the next thing. Uh, once he is in the app experience, once uh, he starts to get to you, use the app, then he should get to the magic moment as soon as possible. In-app guide now, uh, this is again kind of a friction, but uh, uh, most of the popular apps including Evernote uh, and uh, multiple other apps, what they are doing is instead of, uh, you know, writing text notes or the help file, uh, they are building three, four slides right at the time uh, when the user is uh, going to tap open the app for the first time. And within those three, four slides, they explain the entire functionality of the app and also guide the user why they have to tap the registration button whether it is a Facebook, Google Plus or their own registration method. This has kind of uh, been proven that it decreases the, uh, you know, the propensity where users won't uh, give you the registration info because you are kind of hand-holding them, uh, telling them that why you are taking uh, any info at all. If you are taking, let's say, permissions in the Android, if you explain to the user, uh, likely chance of them uh, deleting the app or not giving you the permission is less. Uh, then uh, what it would be if you directly tap op uh, open the app and then uh, ask for those permissions without any explanation at all. And if they are visual, then uh, it definitely helps the course that uh, uh, you, you, uh, you know, picture always uh, speaks better than uh, writing a text which uh, most of the people don't read. And the first slide of that uh, guide is obviously most important because if uh, that's not interesting or that's kind of a name of your app and the next page is only going to be the guide, don't waste any space on the mobile. Each screen is uh, very critical. Uh, as I keep repeating, the earlier that the your user get to use your app, the key functionality, the better it would be for your app. In the user experience, again, you have to think about the monetization also. Uh, so many of us like uh, think that the user acquisition is important. Let's uh, keep our app free and uh, we'll uh, think about the monetization later. But the one thing you have to, I mean, there is no harm in this strategy, but the one thing you have to be uh, quite careful about is, once you give a feature for free, you cannot in any which way make it paid later on. That's uh, completely going to destroy your app. I mean, I know WhatsApp have uh, put a subscription model, uh, but that is like $1 for a year. So that's almost uh, painless. But uh, if you're, uh, let's say, a magazine app, you start giving magazines for free for one month and then start charging for it, on the mobile app store, such a model doesn't uh, work in uh, my experience. Uh, so that is why it's very important to plan monetization where you may want to run the first round of the functionality, where you want to see that uh, what is working in your app and what is not working. And based on the iterations and as you move on, then you start building premium features which you are asking your users to pay for. I think Evernote has done that uh, very well. Uh, where uh, their main app and almost all of the functionality in the Evernote app remains free and uh, now they have come up with premium functionality where they are doing OCR you have to buy a monthly subscription and in return you get extra space and some OCR functionality and they are doing good uh, because your happy users are ready to give you back uh, as you have not made the core functionality uh, uh, charged. <coughs> 
for you are not charging for that notifications i can't emphasize enough but they are the most important thing for user acquisition in a mobile app and uh, quite often uh, this is something that people don't think about while designing their app or while creating the user experience the whole idea of a mobile app is the you know uh, vis-a-vis desktop is that in a mobile app you can call back your user you can tell your user you can phone, you can send a notification tell the user practically you have not used my app for two days please use me for one reason or the other let's say in a dating app like twine there is a date waiting for you why don't you come back and use it or there are 1000 people uh, who have joined in bangalore why don't you come back and uh, use uh, come back and use the app or you have not used the app for seven days come back and uh, use it even uh, if they have delete you can send a notification to a email but notification which comes in the form of badge it comes in the form of screen this is the biggest advantage for a mobile app and this can call back your user with millions of app out there it's very easy that your user though he may or she, uh, like your app or he may not have got the first good experience but the uh, the the power that you have to call him back assuming that he has not deleted your app is is quite powerful and there are so many ways to create beautiful notifications which are not spamming the user but are actually meaningful the user that uh, he would end up clicking those to see okay what the heck i just need to open the app and check it out so likely chances that if he didn't get a first good experience he may not get a good experience again but uh, you can't uh, miss the point that uh, there is always chicken and egg problem when you release the app especially it is a social app or where uh, users are the actual content uh you need enough user base to actually make the app meaningful because that those are your content they are creating the content in terms of social media like instagram if enough users are not there they don't uh, post the photos and so for the lurkers they don't get to see any photos so uh when they come again by the time there are enough users and there is a good chance that they may get a good experience a second time when you call them back so notifications are super important and uh, they need to be thought through when you are designing the user experience so you know how to call back the user uh, once he or she is not using your app <coughs> so uh, in the development stage again i'm not focusing on how to actually go about uh, doing the design development or i'm just focusing on some of the tips uh, uh, which i have learned by either making mistake or uh, some random trial and which i have worked out uh, really well for us so during the development stage i think these things are always kept as an uh, afterthought that is the uh, user acquisition and analytics stage we are mostly focused on building the app and uh, towards the later half when we are close to the app store release then we think about okay we need to know about the user we need to know their demographics and everything so which stage that we should go with all the good stages that uh, there are out there they will require strong integration with your code and unless until you are planning it ahead if you do it in the later half you will regret it because you won't get enough information to act on it so it is very important that you choose your integration stks uh, for user acquisition and analytics when i say user acquisition uh, i'm not sure if uh, all of you are aware or not but there are like all kind of paid user acquisition stks like tap joys for uh, burst marketing chat boost and others uh, which would eventually allow you to acquire users from other places to bring your app to be downloaded again these things are thought in the after your version 1 is out or version 2 is out it is better to integrate them whether you use them or not that secondary thing but at least have the sdks being dropped and for the analytics as i said you need to have a strong integration with your code because you are checking for events and uh, you have to go really granular on checking the events like uh, as i was able to tell that out of 100 users 80 users are able to tap the facebook login button and 20 users are not able to and that is the reason i am able to persist with the facebook functionality on the i tell you why it is important on the when i go to the itunes review store or an android store almost uh, 90% of the users are bitching about why you are using facebook so if i look at the itunes comments it would uh, create a knee jerk reaction for me that everyone is complaining about the facebook integration and i should better remove it because that's not being helpful once i remove it then the people will download the app but this is far from truth uh, there are two reasons to that happy users very randomly give you you know they have to be super happy to come and give comments on the itunes app store usually they are content using the app so they will not come and uh, give feedback 
so it's only the twist of users who are not happy with your app they'll come and talk about it and uh, uh, they will also gravitate you towards doing more mistakes which you have already done so it is better it's always good to listen to your users but my opinion is listen more to your happy users and uh, it's okay to ignore you know you can take comments from them but it is not uh, important to listen to your unhappy user vis-a-vis -vis happy users because happy users will tell you like what feed uh, what actually they like in the app so that you can keep focusing on that and keep making it better and uh, uh the 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 users which are not liking the app they will give you feedback which may not be that important for your app as i explained like only 20% of the users are actually not liking facebook integration 80% are able to give and if i remove facebook uh just so i give you the context of twine app like uh, in this we uh, why we call it as a first intellectual dating app is we don't show the pictures of male or female to each other they need to have a conversation first understand each other we connect them based on their mutual likes we don't give choices like other dating apps where you go uh, select a photo see how good looking the person is and based on that you initiate the interaction here we don't show the photo keep it blurred and you have to engage in a conversation and if after you like the person then you can request for a reveal now in this scenario it was super important for us to know that this person is a male and this person is a female we can't allow any random person to come in claim that he is 17 year old and a female so he might be a 50 year old uh, you know male uh, sitting somewhere so facebook already have you know anti spam and uh, you know your uh, identity verification algorithms which they have worked and perfected over years we just built use their algorithm and built on top of it uh, using their registration so if someone is logging in through facebook then we only show the facebook photo which is blurred out and uh, all the parameters including his age gender and all are taken from facebook so there is very unlikely chance that uh, uh, even if someone goes and create a new facebook registration facebook actually go proactively delete if they are not able to verify you or they are uh, they, uh, they are going to ban your account and that's why it becomes super important for us that in twine we use facebook as a form of verification method so that our users have a good experience but based on the itunes feedback we would have ended up removing it and uh, you know we created on own registration method so based uh, it's only because of analytics we didn't go ahead and do it second thing is the in the development but you have to be conscious there are uh, you know quite a few like uh, flurry among the free ones flurry is the really good one uh, they don't charge you money but uh, they obviously take your data and uh, they cross sell or cross use it for multiple other purpose on the paid uh, analytics sdk mix panel is really good there is another one by name swerve s w e r v e uh, which is also quite good uh, both mix panel and swerve uh, you know uh, they swerve is like monthly model but mix panel will charge you based on events so you would have to code it even better that uh, uh, per user scenario you have to send only one event uh, for you in encapsulate everything in one go otherwise you'll end up paying a lot of money to the mix panel guys moving on to in app uh, rating form now uh, you know this again uh, i just met a founder who is uh, actually doing a startup around uh, you know uh, giving a form uh, within the app to give feedback uh, this again uh, you know i can't emphasize the importance no matter what app you are building please give a in app feedback form and it should be easily accessible because you are pissed off user when they are angry they are looking to vent their feelings and if you don't give them a platform to vent their feelings they are going to go talk about it on the app store on the twitter and elsewhere so it is better to calm them down give them a forum to give them so they give the uh, give all the vent their feelings within the app and that uh, then you can uh, you know actually reply to that also listen to that feedback and uh, likely chances that you won't get uh, you know lower rating on the app store it doesn't prevent everything but even if <coughs> it prevents like uh, 20 or 30% of the negative feedback which you are about to get on the app store i think it is totally worth it and uh, you can't deny the fact that uh, you may actually end up uh, uh, getting some feedback which is actually quite useful for your app which you may incorporate uh, in your development process <coughs> uh that uh, what i talked about was a user feedback form in app rating form is a separate thing uh where you are requesting your users to uh, you know go uh, after a amount of usage to go and rate your app on the app stores like uh, you obviously are requesting them to give you five star rating 
uh, you know the the wording of this form and when you are going to display it to the user is super important first is uh, you know if you are not doing it in your app you have to absolutely do it because as i said like happy users don't have the time to go and give feedback on the itunes form so you have to proactively ask for it if your app is free uh, you know saying something like this uh you know giving us a five star rating on the app store would help us keep the app free and uh, help us grow so you know requesting a user to give you feedback in a very polite manner it has a far more conversion where uh, you know users actually see uh, think that uh, you know they are doing nothing they are not paying you money and this developer is only asking for a fair uh, uh, you know feedback let me go and do it even if they are not so happy with such kind of uh, things usually the users will go and give you a good rating on the app store but it's very important when you pop up the message uh, you know in your eagerness the first time is using the app and you pop up the message that give me rating likely chances you are getting a one star so you have to figure out that uh, when is the warm moment and if the warm moment has passed has he re uh, is the user come back again so there is a warm moment in the app let the user close the app and if he opens up the app again that is the time you want to show that feedback form or the rating form it doesn't matter like some developers put it on the base on frequency if the user opens it three times pop up the form if the user opens five times pop up the form and uh, you know keep popping it back at a particular frequency i think it's all about gratification you have to figure out where your app gratification is happening and if once the gratification is done user has used the core functionality of your app and he returns back to your app that's when you want to show that rating form at the end of the day uh, the purpose of that form is to get good rating the purpose of the form is not to get one star rating so you have to differentiate in between two things during the development uh, now the other question comes is like uh, uh, these two points are combined like pivot iterations mvp or version 1 uh, so obviously uh, you know quite a few people uh, or uh, in my i think most of the people believe in the mvp strategy that uh, get to the market fast uh, understand the user what works what doesn't work and then iterate i on the contrary am of the opinion that uh, you know go for the version 1 strategy at the time of release on the app store uh, think through what you are doing uh, because the app store uh, model or uh, the ecosystem is far more frugal or far more punishing than the web store model or uh, the desktop model where you may get multiple chances if i the time of your first release you don't get confidence boosters either in terms of the user downloads or revenue or the media picking up your app uh, it's very difficult to pick it up uh, you know that confidence again uh, uh, on web you can do seo and multiple other kind of things to bring back uh, users and continue to get feedback on mobile you will see that uh, first day your downloads were 50 second day they become 10 and third day they become 1 by that time it is very difficult to you know uh, tell yourself that okay our mvp is uh, you know what kind of feedback that you think you will get in a uh, 100 to 200 downloads earlier i saw like uh, people were mentioning uh, 100 million downloads or 10 million downloads are required to be a successful app i'm really not sure where those numbers are coming from a million download is a big number still even today if you are able to get even 100000 to a million downloads is a really big thing i i'm pretty sure in india also like if the you show the data in an analytical form that the, the users which are coming are addicted to your app there is a good daily active usage there is a monthly active usage and all those things are there you will get funding easily even in india based on those retention parameters and all even if the usage base is 100000 if you have 100000 daily active usage that's a super super high usage Uh, i know companies in delhi getting funded 20 million dollars with 100000 daily active so 100 million is i i'm not even sure if any app on the app store besides the facebook and the biggest of apps have 100 million downloads uh, that has happened to them it has i mean big apps as, as i said so uh, so as i said like uh, i'm of the opinion go with the version 1 strategy uh, where uh, you usually don't get many chances and your entire purpose is to Uh, release the app and see that you get some confidence boosters uh, that will help you uh, get quality feedback from your users and uh, based on your happy users feedback you can uh, take that feedback and uh, go forward now all uh, you know you must have uh, heard uh, uh, this is uh, 
quite controversial but uh, i'll still uh, state it out like quite a few people uh, keep telling you think out of the box think out of the box what actually is out of the box uh, so uh, i have a you know process which i follow to get out of the box and it's simply that once uh, the app reaches the development stage i stop thinking about the app or doing anything in the app i take myself out and start a new project on my own so for two or three months when the app is in the development stage i just don't go and do anything don't talk to the developers don't talk to the designers or the product manager let the app run its own thing and after three months i am already out of the box so this is the simple methodology that i use to get out of the box where i am not living and breathing the app now i get myself out of the box so when i go and experience the app after two or three months i get in my opinion as close an experience which a new user would get when he is using the app and the feedback is instant either i am liking it or not liking it if i am not liking it i'll tell candidly like this is the reason why i am not liking it and that uh, in my opinion is kind of a uh, out of box thinking now most of uh, some of you might be developing the app yourself or designing it yourself so it might be difficult to do this but if you have a team working uh, under you or you are a product manager yourself so it is worthwhile trying once in your career and see if it works or not for me it definitely works so coming to the pre launch uh, marketing now uh, you know million apps and uh, over million apps on the app stores and uh, uh, i think however cool your idea is <coughs> you have to think about it from the day one how to you know think, uh, get the users to use your app and uh, build a community so one of the things that uh, we do with our apps is uh, you know build a email list and uh, how we go about it is uh, usually we start uh, putting up uh, questions on the create a obviously launch uh, you know there are launch rock pad and multiple other uh, launch sites that you can use and uh, some of the sites you can use to you know ask questions from your users for example for twine we ask a few questions uh, that uh, you know which screen that uh, you should be uh, using for the home screen should it be uh, we uh, gave three screens and uh, users picked up we created a poll then we asked like which icon should we be using we put three icons we necessarily don't need to go by what the poll says uh, we can go by instinct but the very fact that we are involving the users making them feel important and letting them contribute to our app development that means a lot to them and uh, they usually end up sharing or uh, you know you obviously spread your polls on the facebook and multiple other mediums and in the end uh, this is one way where we have seen that uh, uh, users would end up giving you the emails that you are looking for for the launch day so that you can send your url out uh, for the people to download the app uh, so uh, i mean engaging the users before even your app is out during the development stage and the design stage even the idea stage like many many people have seen like they 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 keep their idea like uh, to themselves that uh, you know this is the this is the best idea if it leaks out then uh, you know other people are going to do it there is i mean uh, i'm quite sure i would have uh, done that myself at uh, one part of uh, my career but uh, today i just throw out everything that comes in my mind it is uh, it all comes down to those iterations and pivots that you would do through the journey of uh, app development that is what makes the app what it is uh, or the product that uh, what it is and not the idea idea is only a talking point that will get people excited but uh, there is nothing beyond it so share your idea you know even i mean uh, i can't emphasize enough uh, sharing your idea is super important a temporary and launch website like you obviously you know don't think that at the time of the app store or the launch is only when you require a website as i said uh, you would need a website before launch as well uh, where you can uh, help get the users who are coming to the site engage them uh, through the building a community or uh, starting uh, to reply to them and at the launch obviously you need a pretty good website uh, uh, quite a few people on the launch website they actually instead of giving a direct app store url they may give that they also allow you to send the url to your phone sms through uh you can use twilio or some other uh, sdks to get the uh you know text uh, url of your uh, app sent to your phone itself so that you can click it within your phone otherwise there is a friction point you look at the link on the desktop whereas you have to download the app on the mobile so some people are able to do that having a uh, uh, you know uh, other thing on the website especially the uh, you know uh, 
again a community building uh, either you can th use third party uh, sdks like uh, user voice or things like that uh, to again uh, you know do everything so that you can build a community it's very important in my opinion to build a app video as well uh, the better the video is the video is uh, think of video as something uh, uh, that would attract all kind of audience and at the time of launch which is the biggest audience that you want to attract is it your users which is the most important at the launch actually that's not true the the use the, the most important at the time of launch is the journalist and the media that you want to attract and those people are quite sophisticated uh, you know those people are the ones who are really upfront of the technology and you need to really show them a good product and one way to show the good product is is to have a good video so if you get their mind and attention uh, then is uh, they are going to talk about it and uh, you know write about your app and uh, that is the uh, <coughs> i mean that's also called as pr but uh, uh, you know by uh, uh, some people make the mistake of uh, i'm not saying mistake some uh, pr agencies does good work also but especially in a startup or a bootstrap phase uh, you know uh, getting uh, to retain a pr firm which is uh, uh, really good uh, i think is kind of impossible the rates are quite high so all the pr you would have to do yourself but it is worthwhile to invest in a app video it may cost anywhere from $1000 some app videos are also known in $5 also but uh, your mileage may vary uh, uh, you know and uh, it has to really uh, you know talk about the talk about the app that you are doing maybe i'll show you the video that we did for the twine app that will give you the idea that how much of uh, work usually go into this kind of things you know there is a lot of things that we did ourselves so fair amount of money uh, this video was done in $10000 so so i'll quickly uh, i think that we are running out of time i'll quickly go through the rest of the points uh, app store screenshots are super important uh, most of the people don't go through their description description is important for the app store optimization which again like people are looking for your app and they search the box so they are whatever keywords uh, that you are putting in your app store so, so focus on app store description only for the keywords try putting in as many keywords that you have uh, uh, usually the itunes app store gives you about 8 or 10 keywords uh, don't just limit to yourself uh, app store seo you have to focus on two things one is the your name of the app though the name of the app is twine but on the app store we have listed it as twine the uh, the first flirting and uh, intellectual the intellectual flirting and dating app so if you search for now flirting on the app store it is a third result and on dating is about ninth or tenth result just by putting it in the title and then uh, putting those keywords in the description i think uh, these two the title keyword for both the app stores the android and iphone is the super important so have your uh, 
and though you can name you don't need to name the app on your phone as twine the first intellectual dating app on the phone you can still name it as twine so that people don't have a bad experience while using the app whereas on the app store you can name uh, you can create a big title about 10 words or so and that would really uh, get you the most app store search use than anything else that uh, you are looking to do keywords actually doesn't match up with that title so that all right all right i guess uh Sure. Yeah, I think we are running short of time. Mm. Thanks, Rohan. Yep, yeah, sure. Yep, yeah, sure. Yeah. If there are questions, we mm. will take at least two or three questions. Uh. Hi, Rohan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So uh, generally, what happens uh, not only in um, apps, I've seen it uh, a lot of places mm -hmm. that mostly most products are just me too, and uh, there's very different. It's very difficult to find a differentiating factor. Mm -hmm. uh, it's but basically, it's all about the positioning of uh, what the product is. But there are times when it gets very difficult to product uh, to position your product in such a way that it it is it sets apart from all the apps. so how do you go about thinking about that like on what lines do you think so that you can pinpoint on something i mean that comes in the ideation and brainstorming phase right like if your mind is telling that it is not differentiated enough you cannot resonate the story to a second person don't go ahead with that idea uh as like i said like in all dating apps that you see out there uh the common theme is like it will show you the photo and then you like or dislike the person and you create the interaction we went exactly the opposite way and uh, this has created so much of uh, interest in the media that uh, last week fox news covered it uh, new york times covered it it was also in the cnn uh, news network in spain and it's on the real tv and the mainstream uh, tv which is actually where our audience is our audience is not in the tech crowd but uh, we did think about it like uh, the uh, we can we can tell the value proposition very clearly and uh, say it uh, very uh, in a single line so people will get it so i mean it uh, all comes down to if you don't believe that uh, there is a differentiating point it's better to uh, you know iterate your idea what do you think about uh, you know cross platform mobile development platform like phone gap is that better or is it better now i am a strong proponent of a native app i don't like cross platform because at the end of the day you are looking to give a great user experience to your uh, guys and you uh, you know reducing the friction and i believe cross platform will always create uh, friction here and there so it won't be the best experience performance the native features uh, you know native elements that you can use cross platform uh, they, you will always be dependent on the sdk what you can do uh, yeah uh, so uh, i make a in app uh, by the way is the founder who is doing that in app feedback form thanks so my my question is basically on behalf of the app developers out here most people fear that if they put something like uh, in app uh, feedback notification thing uh, it's going to be mind boggling and who will sit and respond to everyone that's that's the response i get from most founders do you still think it's uh, it's worth doing for a product manager product owner to actually do that at least in the initial phase while you're <coughs> figuring out your product market fit it's 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 something worth it right no absolutely i mean uh, as i said like uh, this is something which uh, people usually ignore uh but uh you know the amount of feedback that we got and uh, the way that it has helped uh, whenever you are able to address uh, someone in a nice way and you see that he is going to be content you can always add a line in the ps that uh, would you mind give us a good rating so these are the kind of things that you would do to interact with your community thank you thank you thanks rohit uh, for sharing the wonderful tips and secrets of the mobile apps like uh, now 